Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another test driven development video. I'm going to pick up right where I left off. It is still January 26th for me. And where we were uh, was we had just gotten the commas to format in. Um, let's go and see if that actually worked the way we thought it was going to, or <laughs> we, me. Um, so if I do that, that all works properly. If I do that, oh look at that, that's beautiful, I love it. Um, I press the help button on my Mac keyboard, the cursor turns into a question mark. No idea what that's actually supposed to do. Oh, that's just gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> All right. Um, the, uh, the, the minus sign's in the wrong spot, though. I think, I don't know, how, how do you spell minus dollars 203. Is it dollars minus 203? Hmm. Uh, actually, you know what it is? It's in parentheses. So let's go ahead and get that in there. So two string formats negative numbers with parentheses. So we're going to want minus 500 to look like that. So that should fail. Uh, expected parentheses was minus sign. So um, that actually raises the question. We've got this one done. Uh, we need to parse negative numbers with parentheses. And 500 and 500 equals minus. Yeah, I guess I naturally put the minus sign first, don't I? Okay, so um, at any rate, that's failing. Minus 500. Now I think it might be worth getting that currency instance. Um, so we've got a number format currency formatter. It's going to be number format dot get currency instance for the US the currency formatter um, set maximum fraction digits it's going to be zero and does it do I don't, you know, I don't see anything about formatting this with parentheses. And then, and you know, for, for parsing and formatting and locales is incredibly complicated. Um, so rather than dig around in that part of the Java library, it is so easy for me to just write this myself. I'm just going to write it myself. So, um, First, we'll extract a method here. We're going to um, convert number to string. Can it, oops. We can inline that. Um, Act. That should still work. I'm I'm refactoring before getting a green bar, and that's that's bad. So slap myself on the wrist for that one. What I need to do is say if um, 
the underlying value, the amount, is less than zero, then else All right, piece of cake. I hope it works. No, oh, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, oh, okay. What was that error? Expected. Oh, um, yeah, we've got the minus sign in there. So, really, what we need to do is, uh, Pull this out as a local variable. Um, call that rounded amount. And then rounded amount is going to equal math dot absolute value of rounded amount. Yeah, I think that will be okay. Yeah, that works. Let's see it go. Um, that's interesting. We got some errors coming out. Yeah, it doesn't like minus dollar sign. Um, it really doesn't like minus dollar sign. Anyway. So if I have a minus one, two, three, there it is. All nice and proper with the commas in the right spots and everything. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Ah, oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, and then, yeah, doesn't like the parentheses but that's okay. Yeah, and if, apparently if we tab away, it tries to do something, but that's okay, that's, that's not done yet. So there we go. We've got our string formatting working. Mm, I love it. Um, we don't have as have it printing in color, but I'm not exactly sure how to do that. I think what we have to do is actually pass in the graphical context or whatever the Java equivalent is uh, to dollars and have it operate on that. So that's going to be a bit trickier. But um, yeah, looking good so far. Um, yeah, so far so good. I could turn this into a is negative. Does that really increase the readability? Eh, might as well. Yeah, I think it is better. Try that. There we go. Keep it private for now. Although I could see a I could see a day when that wanted to be public, but not right now. Okay, so um,
That's good. Um, yeah, I think we're okay here. So now, um, I, I mentioned earlier that it was odd to to do the formatting here in dollars text field and have the actual parsing or, or do the parsing here in dollars text field and do the formatting in dollars. Um, somebody suggested writing a factory method on Twitter and I, I think they're right. Um, really, actually I think what they did was suggest a factory class but that would be overkill. I just need a factory method. Um, so yeah, I want to move this code over to dollars. Uh, it's quite simple. I just need to have uh, a parse method. I could also have it be a constructor dollar string, but I think a parse static parse method would be a little more uh, readable. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to just re uh, refactor here, and we'll see if I can get it all done in the time available. Okay, uh, let's get the return dollars. Okay, so that's obviously wrong, but I don't have any tests around it. So let's see. Moving methods from class from one class to another is always a bit tricky. Um, honestly, I think it might be easiest to do this all in one big chunk. Um, that's always a bit risky. But uh, no, I don't want to do that. Let's let's do it slower. So and also that starts to make this pretty big. But um, that's okay. I. I Parser. So let's see. Well, this certainly makes the test a lot cleaner, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. That's much nicer. I think I might just put all these tests all in one, all these assertions in one test. I think I'm going to have a chance to finish this in this episode. Um, but now that I've moved the parsing over into dollars, what I can do is do this. Which is a huge improvement. Yeah. Okay, so now I just need to move the test over. I'll pick that up in the next episode. Um, that's it for this time, so thanks again for watching, and I will catch you next time.